Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. This is a video guide on how the build queue and the build controls work. Just a fair bit of warning for controller and gamepad players. I am not going to go over key bindings for those since I only play keyboard or mouse and I don't know the key bindings for those anyways. First off, you can find the build queue settings in if you go to the main menu at the top left corner or hit escape. Uh, then you go to settings, gameplay, and here there will be three settings that will affect the build queue in some way. There is distance space deploy mode, which the tooltip reads, when close to a structure, units will be deployed defensively. When further away, units will be de will deploy and follow your air mech. I'm going to explain all, what all these settings will do in the game because these tooltips are kind of a uh, little... You can, they're not going to tell you like everything about it, so next setting we have is default deploy at structures and the tooltip reads default to deploying at structures instead of moving to your air mech when starting a map. Does not affect the ability to cycle deploy locations, hold E and click to set rally point. And then the third setting we have is swap control key behavior, units will build but not deployed by default. Control can be used to deploy plus build. Advanced option, not suggested for new players. And I believe the settings here right now, I have them all set to the default. Like when you start the game, it should be all the settings, which is kind of weird. That swap key build behavior says it's an advanced option, not suggested for new players, but it's on default. Uh, unless someone can correct me if I'm wrong, I did try creating a new account earlier and starting fresh to see what the setting default settings were and this is what I saw. This since the play deploy mode was off, the default deploy structures was off, and swap control key behavior was on. Alright, now to go for go over any key, the key bindings to that deal with build queues and its controls. Uh, we're just gonna go to control tab here and it should be the first one is activate slash use and it's default set to the E and that was like kind of shown earlier in that tooltip there. Um, it reads triggers the activate slash use command on your air mech. Press while over your fortress or team owned outpost to auto deploy units from your build queue. Well that's kind of a calling it activate slash use it's not telling you anything but you can kind of get a hint of what it's going to be doing uh, in game actually. I'm going to go over that when we're actually in game, not here. Then there's a, another key binding, but that's hidden and that's set to control. You won't be able to find it in any of these tabs and you're going to have to be careful with it. Like if you set a, a different key to control, you can actually unbind that hidden, hidden key. Or well, that's what happened to me like a while ago and there wasn't really a way to bring back that rebind that key to like control unless you use this uh, reset to default bindings key and but that'll reset all your key bindings and you really don't want to do that because then you have to redo all your key bindings again so just take caution if you're using if you're setting uh, any other key to use control as its key binding all right so now I'm gonna be showing off like the build queue and all the controls in game and I'm gonna choose to load up my own custom map because every official map right now doesn't start off with any starting outpost and you really need another outpost to really see how how to take advantage of everything all the build queues and how the, how it all works in air mac you really need it, multiple structures to build that to really see how it works just let me load it up here. It's in top maps right now, but I'm gonna just gonna go to, into my maps in case you want to see my the number. It's in public, one three one I believe. Yes, it's gonna right click to see all of my maps. It's kind of sad it doesn't show player name, but it is what it is. I'm gonna double click to select it, fill this as a bot, and here we go. We're gonna load up my map. All right. 
Let me just start this. Three, two, one. It's just gonna display all the information on my scripts. Then I'm just gonna go head back into the settings, and then I'm gonna start explaining everything. Like, okay, so now that we're in game, I'm gonna go over the build cues themselves because there's a lot of things that you might not notice and that the game doesn't tell you. First off, I'm just gonna build some probes. Right? You'll you'll see that they're like just being put in the queue. They're being held in there. You see this arrow here. Um, this is what I'm gonna call the hold queue. Um, this is basically you can hold a, it can hold a maximum of six units, and they are built in the order that you put them in. Uh, you could also hit backspace to like take out that unit you built in there. It'll refund you all your credits. It won't like give you a penalty or anything. All right. And once units are completed, you can you can hold down space or whatever your key binding for pickup units is, and you can pick it up. But something that's you, you should have already known by now is you could you could build you could pick up like units from any, everywhere. It, it doesn't really matter that. Uh, where you build them, you, you can pick them up from any outpost. Alright, so that's not the only thing you could do with the hold Q. You could also press E, and it'll, it'll auto-deploy. Right now, my flag... No, I shouldn't go over flags right now, but right now they're auto-deploying to follow to me. What do I have? Alright, default deploy structures. So, since that setting's off, units will... When I use the auto deploy command, they will automatically follow my mech. And right now, I'm pressing E to have these probes follow me, but I could also press left mouse any unit in the queue, like I'll add a Bucky in there, and I'm gonna auto deploy it. Boom, I chose to auto deploy it there. And that's what you can do with like clicking, left clicking, you can left click any unit that you want in here to have it auto deploy. Well, you could also hit E on the keyboard, but that'll only auto play the first unit. A couple of other things you could do is you could hold control, then you press E, and it'll deploy every every unit to like the closest outpost there is. Like I'll do it again here, and then the way to do it based on the UI is just to right click, easy peasy, just like that. It'll auto automatically auto play all finished units to the closest outpost. And this can be done anywhere on the map. I'm just going to fly far away right now. And auto deploy. And now, yeah, now they're auto deploying and they're following me. Yep. I'm just going to get all these to follow me. And then I'm going to send them off to die. So we don't have to see them right now. So I could start going over other things. Actually, I have sandbox. So I could just do this. Now they're all gone, and we could continue going over things. And a particular thing about how the right clicking or hitting control and E works to deploy, or just auto deploying from your hold queue, is that it's base. It'll deploy to the closest outpost you are, you know. So there's really no indicator, so you just can't the eyeball or guess what's the closest outpost. Like, it's pretty easy to tell that I'm closest to this outpost, but once you get to, like, here, I don't know if it's going to be to this out, to this outpost here or my fortress back over here. I have no idea. No real indicator. You just have to eyeball it. So be careful, especially if you're going to use the auto-deploy all. Like, you don't want it to deploy at the wrong, wrong place. Like, it's deploying all at the fort here, but what if I wanted to uh, auto-deploy every all of my units at this outpost. I I don't want to make the mistake of auto playing everything here. Cause what if I have a ton of tanks in my hold queue and it and it's gonna take a really long time to rebuild all that tanks. And if I accidentally auto deploy them across the map, that's not a good thing. So be careful about that. Alright, so something to mention. There's only one single hold queue. I mean that's kinda obvious since you could pick up units from everywhere. Oh, uh, why would I need to mention this fact? Well, it's because there's another type of build queue that in AirMac, 
And I'm gonna go over that right now. Alright. Now I'm gonna be holding control on my keyboard. And now building probes. You'll see something different now. See now it's automatically auto deploying and he's auto deploying, right? Auto deploying. Mm hmm And what makes the auto deploy very different than just the hold queue is that there's multiple. There's one auto deploy queue per outpost, like I'm gonna build no I'm gonna build some tanks at my fort, then I'm gonna build ten tanks at this out oh no. I need a hold control to do this. I'm gonna build some tanks here, build some tanks and auto deploy here, and see they're gonna build at the same time. You could also add units to your hold command, and it will also build. So now I have, th I have three long homes being built at once, and that's a pretty fast build a uh, build speed, and that's mostly due to due to every out outpost and fortress having their its own auto deploy queue. All right, and you can get, kind of get a get a hint from like where the units are going to be built to by following these blue these blocky things that come out of your mech. Those can give you a hint of where when you give an uh, when you put units into the auto deploy queue, you can tell where they're going to go based on where these blocks are going. That's a small hint. Maybe it could also hint about like maybe if you have a Right, you have stuff in your hold queue, right? You could just add something to the auto deploy, and you have a small hint of what outpost is closest to you. So you could do that too. Um, and you might have already noticed this that I've actually gone to eight units in this queue. How did I do that? Sh shouldn't I only have six units? Well, that's because there's a all individual queues. Every individual queue, whether it's a hold queue or an auto deploy queue, can hold a maximum of six units. But there's also a, a universal maximum eight units that can be, uh, in total, have a being built or have a build order to. You'll only see a maximum of eight units to this bar, to this to the left here. You never see more than. I don't have enough. Show it off more. Fill it up. Yeah, see, I fill it all up to eight, and that is because of the multiple build queues that's allowing me to do this. And that it lets you get up to a maximum of eight units being built at a time with any combination of of build queues. Like, I could just, I could have a uh, four units in an auto deploy at this outpost, and then four units in my hold queue. That's totally eight. Or I could have. Um, Six uh, units being auto deployed, put into the auto deploy queue at my fort. One in the auto deploy here at this outpost, and then one in my hold. That's still a total of eight. So any combination of queues, as long as the units that are in all the queues, it, it'll total up. As long as it's under eight, you won't hit that cap. But if the total amount of units you put in a queue in every queue um, has a limit of eight. Okay, that's uh, pretty much everything about the build queues themselves. Uh, sorry for the abrupt cut, but my game crashed and I just restarted the game now. All right, okay, now we're just gonna get back. I'm gonna start going. All right, that, that, that should have, I should have already gone over everything about the build queues themselves, and I'm gonna go over the go over unit rally flags now. Uh, unit rally flag are basically rally points for units that are being auto deployed. You can hold control and press E the first time you see that little poof away from your mech. Uh, that always happen and it'll reset the flag and make any auto deployed units stay at the outpost. Then you can press it again and you'll see the flag be placed on your mech. Um, you will only be seeing this flag in beam of light you not your your teammates and your opponents won't be seeing that, so don't think you could spam it to like get attention anywhere. It doesn't work like that. Just use a a ping, like click on your map, and that to actually do a ping for your teammates instead of thinking that flag is there to mark something for your teammates. It's that's not the purpose of it. All right. 
you can okay I already went over that okay sorry I'm reading a script here going over and things that I want me to go over all right okay I think about flags now because uh, reading it's a bit confusing this flag is a uh, somewhat a bit confusing but the flags when you see a flag be set somewhere it'll only affect the units that are built right after like I'm gonna auto deploy these and they're gonna come to come to me All right this is being auto deployed it's coming to me it's coming to me it's coming to me all right so now I'm gonna do, set the flag no I need to do something else like here's another example I'm gonna put these into queue then I'm gonna set the flag all the way no I can't do that with this Never mind. You only see that with if I swap the control key behavior, that'll happen more often. But in general, the flags will only affect units that are being built to that locate that are built for that. So only building units now. There go to that flag. Boom. Set the flag to my mech and start building units, and they'll go to go to me instead. Come on. Yep, they're coming to me now. And the thing about the rally flags is that auto deploy units will take the shortest path towards to it, whether it be my mech, be my mech, or an actual rally point. Like units will take the take a line will take the shortest path to it. I'm just gonna build some tangos here to go to it. Fill up all my queues. Oh yeah, you see that that flag didn't apply to these tangos, and they're just deploying over there. Boom! Now, now, now these are going over there. That's just an uh, example, and they're taking the shortest routes. Like it's, you can use them to like take an alternate route, like take this bottom path here on this map, or take an upper route up through here. But it might be a bit finicky trying to place uh, a rally point there sometimes you might just want units to just deploy and fall out of your mech but do note that you do have the option to set a rally point which you might want to want to use in certain situations or quite often depends on how you play and what your strategies are and as such okay and then you already kind of should already somewhat notice it already, but Control E is both the both the key for deploying all and setting a flag. So you're gonna you might have conflict key conflictions like maybe you want to put a flag somewhere, but now you have to deal with having to probably empty out your entire hold queue because because it's, it's the same button press. The only way, this is kind of dumb, I think it's just kind of, just an oversight on this, because if you have, if you have the, if you have swap control key behavior ticked off, it, it won't do that, and I'm gonna, for some reason, I don't know, but if you don't, if you're playing with, with swap control key, control key build behavior on, you're just gonna have to deal with that, if that's the way you want to play. Else, if you super switch it the other way, you won't have that issue. All right, now it's time to actually go over the individual settings. I'm gonna go back in the gameplay here and explain distance-based deploy mode. Okay, first off, I'm gonna enable it now, and what this will do is automatically set the flag, the, the rally flag, depending on my distance from my structure. Like if I'm close to a structure, it'll keep it off, right? You don't see it. If I fly a certain... Wait, I need to reset the flag first. Is that reset? Oh yes, yes it is. See, it's, I'm not pressing any keys. I'm just going to move right. And you see the flag on my cleave be put on my mech. If I fly near close to it, you'll see the poof. That's the poof of the flag being disabled. And it's just going to... You're going to see it. Flag on. Poof. Flag on, poof, and that's gonna automatically control uh, 
the flag if if you have it disabled but if you have the flag set on your set on your Mac if, if you do set it on your Mac I believe this is set on my Mac no it's not set on my Mac this is a bit confusing and this is why I really I personally don't like this having this setting on but it can be helpful if you're new yeah it's on my Mac now oh it still takes it off no, no. but if you do put it on the ground somewhere it's gonna stay there see this flag isn't disappearing anymore it's just sitting there and another weird thing about what's somewhat confusing me right now is that for some reason if you have this setting on you get a, a third flag command it's you, you lose the ability to to manually control having your flag stay on your mech and keep it that way if you fly over an outpost but for some reason you do gain the ability to double tap and it'll just immediately put the flag hold control and double tap E and it'll automatically put the flag down right under your mech or where your mech is standing which is weird since it's not in any of the other like you're not you're not giving that option that, that double tap to put on the ground option if you have that setting off but in general I uh, as I already mentioned I don't like this set having the setting on because it can be somewhat confusing like say this like I planned a oh this is a good example of showing how the how the flag works like now the flag is on these unions were built before the flag was on now that I auto point they're just gonna stay at that outpost now if I queue if I queued up and hold these probes while I have a flag right here right auto deploy they're gonna come over here see there you see a little little line of the sh of the shortest distance they're traveling to take to get to this point and now that was an example of the flag if you build the units the flag only affects units you build after that you place the flag hopefully I'm wording that right it's 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 very weird weird to explain I mean but we can kind of tell if you play okay back to reading the script all right now for I'm gonna disable this setting now off and then I'm gonna turn on default to play structure this is probably the simplest one of the of this of these build queue controls and stuff because this is just at the start of the game it's just where your flag is if you have it on when you start a game uh, the flag won't be set to your mech if you have this ticked off your flag at the start of the game will be on your air mech it's it's just a preference thing doesn't doesn't really uh, affect too much it's not that hard to understand hmm Let's see, let's see, let's see. I, usually... I like to keep it off. Personally, I like to keep it off because. Actually, I like to keep it on. Never, I said that wrong. I like to keep it on because I don't really have a need if I'm using auto deploy at a start of the game. I don't really, really have a, a need to have it following me. It's also your only having a couple units follow you at that start you don't have any other units for protection so I think it's just better um, if you were to use auto deploy at the start to just have a build out a structure you don't need a unit following you at the start of the game because what because you, you what you can do because what at the start of the game you're going to have like four tanks and it's going to take like eight seconds to build each you can easily just like move these pick them up themselves and move it around you don't need to wait for a follow like it's gonna take forever to do this for them to move up to you when you just pick it up much faster you get them out there now so I like to keep that setting ticked on for that where case I do even use or if I am using auto deploy at a start of the game now for the final setting here with swap control key behavior it's default on I'm gonna turn it off now and basically what it does it makes every control that did not need holding control to use require control to use and also the opposite
So any build controls that did require holding control now don't need a hold control anymore. That's probably confusing the process in your minds, but you can get the feel of it. The main change, however, is that the queue units your queue that units are put in without holding control is now the auto deploy. And now the queue where if you hold control, that's the whole queue now. Alongside this change, you'll need to hold control to use the E key to have units auto deploy with the hold control. So pressing E alone doesn't do anything now, it just messes with the flags which don't need control to be held anymore. Now if I hold control, hit 1E, it's going to deploy everything. Alright, let me get rid of the Ceramec quickly. I'm going to refill my hold queue again. I guess may maybe I, I did test this before, but it should be holding control and then holding E will deploy all, but tapping it once should only deploy one. I tested it a couple times before this, but for some reason it glitches out sometimes, so beware. Where if you were expecting to only deploy one unit by holding control and pressing E, you might deploy all your units for some reason. If you still want to just deploy one unit, you still have the option of just clicking the one unit to the side. And that's easy peasy simple to do. Nothing too complex about it. And... Let's see, let's see. Alright, I started mentioning the flags. Now you don't need to hold control. And so you just, you can tap, keep tapping E to go from the flag put on, set on your map, or reset and disabled. So units will deploy at the closest structure and stay there. Press E, and now units will deploy and follow my mech. I just need to hold E and left mouse anywhere, and I can set the rally point anywhere on the ground where I want. Okay, and that should all, you should already notice that the, the, for the hold queue, the hitting control plus E, that'll deploy all, while I only need to hit E to set the flag. Well, that's one reason why I really, really like this setting, because those two options no longer conflict. Like, I can set a flag anywhere I want or on my mech or disable a flag without accidentally auto deploying everything in my queue. It's I feel it's much safer if you were to be using unit rally flags to to have swap control key uh, build behavior turned off. Because you won't run into that issue. But besides that, I still like to have this have the setting on for another reason because when I'm like building these probes here it's it's so much easier to just press the build key without having to hold control because usually when I'm using auto point and building a whole a ton of these quick to build units quickly yeah I'm not like building a tank which which is kind of, which sometimes I'll do I'll spam it out but like for whole queue for the whole queue it is much more tolerable to to just hold to just um, hold control and fill it up because for the most part more often than not you're just going to be filling up your whole queue of tanks or or units that build slower instead of like instead of more often with auto deploy you might be the auto deploy queue you might be building faster units like infantry spamming out infantry or medium vehicles and that they build much faster and so can take advantage uh, of faster build speed and which will require you to press it more and so control becomes a hassle okay I believe that goes over the build queue and and uh, Kelp's men messaging me right now. I'm just gonna sorry. I'm gonna ignore you for a second uh, I believe I've gone over everything about the build queue and build controls now if I'm wrong You can check out the comments for any corrections by me or anyone else. Maybe I'll pin them or something um, But now I'm gonna sh sh 
go over some simple techniques that let you maximize uh, build queues. So no, he's asking me for help. Uh, I'll go. I'll go help him. Help him in a bit. Okay, what you can do if you have a ton of credits, like I'm sitting at nine 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 credits. That's a lot of money. You know what this allows me to do? It allows me to build it really fast. Like I'm building a lot of tanks here. I've, I've already dropped half of my half of my credits here by building all these tanks this fast, right? I can also choose to do this. Not gonna. I'll have tangles follow me. Boop boop boop. Boop boop boop. Add some more into hold queue. And I guess you could hold nine. Wow, that's a correction. Nine in the maximum build queue. No, it's seven. Maybe I just can't read. Alright, all this is now following me. It's very quick. Just fly back and forth between these outposts. So make a ton of units. I'm going to send them this way. And then set it as a flank. I could send it as a flank. They'll go through here. Or, alternatively, I could set a rally, right? Like, for example, right there. And I need to go to these these tangles now. There, No, those are just the longhorns. And that should allow me to just, if you have a rally set like that, not like following your mech, what you can do is easily make a ton of units that'll rally up to that and go like in a flow. Like this is very good, this is very useful for rush downs if you have the money and the upkeep. I can even do this away from that post, although I only have one, but it'll still allow me to keep up a stream. And as you see, you can see these tangles are slowly rolling into here. I could do it with. A lot of other units but in general medium vehicles or other fast vehicles sometimes infantry are useful to just do something like this make a, a big rally point for that oh I better stop I need to get rid of these before they kill the fortress delete these and the thing about that just like using multiple cues to build really fast is it's mostly a winner strategy because you need first off you need the credits and you need the upkeep to build it so in most case that basically means you need to have an outpost advantage maybe you have middle or you manage to cheese their outpost but it's still going to require a little bit of time but unless you banked up a ton of credits and upkeep which is more often than not is pretty bad to do or unless you're have a lot of skill and know what you're doing you're not really gonna find much it's not gonna be super powerful as a loser like maybe in this position here where I I need to get myself a lot of credits out of nowhere to show this as an example I'm gonna take some of these and just sell them all and like in this example where we're in this matchup the enemy is at a five, uh, four outpost advantage over my two, and for some reason I have a ton of upkeep open, and and I have a ton of credits now. If I was in this situation, I could hope to do this, like rush it down with a ton of units. I could rush it down, rush it down, build for my four. Built from this outpost, built from this bottom outpost. I was just captured four outpost, bottom post. I'm building at three different outposts at really fast speeds. This is rushing down. This is a really good for rush down if you have credits and upkeep. Now, just for an example, like see, I'm getting plus. Uh, uh, let's see how much income this gives. That almost gives a hundred, and I get like what is it, ten to fifteen upkeep. Yeah, on a maps of a fewer outposts, for example, Chasm, where it only has five total outposts, if you're a loser, you're really at a massive dis- this strat uh, technique is not as good. Maybe on a map with more outposts, where that difference between credits and upkeep allows you to do this, but on a lot of maps, rush, using multiple build queues, is a winning or winner strategy credits and upkeep is what you need now I'm gonna show off another thing you can do with 
by taking advantage of all the cues, I'm gonna load up. I'm gonna load up Storm now. Storm's gonna be a very good example of this. You can do this on every map, but it's but Storm is one of the most important. It's one one of the maps that'll be greatly affected by doing this. What you can do is is put like you get like I believe what is it twenty five thousand credits at the start of the game. That's very similar to the situation I was describing earlier about multi queuing at multiple outposts. It's where you had a good amount of we have a high amount of credits and a lot of upkeep. What this allows me to do at the start of the game, I could be building two long ones at once. A normal player, a starting, a new player, would probably be only building one. But now you're building much faster than them. You have much. You're getting out firepower faster, right? And I could use this very fast. The time it would take them. The time. I, I built four Longhorns in the time where using one Q would uh, require the time to build four Longhorns. That's a big advantage there. That's about, since the Longhorns about what, eight seconds to build? That's a 16 second difference to get out the same amount of firepower. I mean, like the credits is, is going to what's limit you early on from like spamming out mo a ton of units from Q. But Whenever you have a situation like that, where you have a lot of credits, a lot of credits stocked up, you can take advantage of multiple build queues and build faster. Uh, I think I'll show off another map too. I'll show off, show off duel. I'll do this in duel again. Do this in duel. Alright, here we go. Alright, build one into my auto deploy. Q, build one into my hold deploy Q, and the thing about the auto deploy, if you hold space while unit finishes, you can immediately pick it up out of the outpost. That's an interesting fact. But now I have two Longhorns here, built in the time. It built much faster. Boom! Pick up two Longhorns here, and I'm on my roll at as a much faster. I'm uh, probably ahead of my opponent now by doing this. I'm gonna mess it up though, because I can't think and talk and play at the same time. And that's what's okay. So I cleared out all these neutrals now. It's it's mostly faster. In a lot of cases, just faster. So why 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 wouldn't you do this? You should be taking advantage of this every game. Because in every game you start off with 25k credits and you have a lot of free upkeep from the fortress. Why wouldn't you take advantage of multiple queues to build out, to get out all your firepower faster than just doing one queue? Alright, I believe that's everything I want to go over in this video. Uh, I went over the build queues themselves, some of the controls, all the settings with them and then I went over a couple techniques and strategies that you could do with them but do know their limits too and so hopefully I got everything that I wanted in this video and until next time